Hello guys, welcome to part 4 of the 3ds Max Sci-Fi Vehicle. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series of videos to help me produce more great content for you guys. So guys, it's about time to introduce you some new features of 3ds Max 2023, the Snap Pivot Tools. So to access those, we simply go into Tools and then Snap Working Pivot Tools, you can click on this button right here to pop this out. Now guys, in this video, I'm going to be manually clicking on these buttons right here. However, in the future videos, I'll set these to a hotkey or I'll use these hotkeys and you won't see this menu anymore. So this is the video where I show you how we can use these. All right, so essentially this is great when you wanna work on an angular part like this, for example. Let me go ahead and turn off the symmetry. So how does this come in handy? Well. Let's, right now we have the situation guys where this is at an angle, right? When we create an object by default, let's say this box and turn, turn off auto grid, right? So this box in the very planar situation right now, which means if we apply at a poly, and I've got at a poly set to the hyphen key right next to the one key, that's how I can apply at a poly so quickly. So in this situation guys, we can select this and using either the default view or world, we can very easily move things right or left, you know, up or down and so on and so forth. However, what happens if the object is rotated? Well, suddenly, if we select this and try to move it, we can only move it like this, or we can move it like that. As you can see, we can't really move it according to this angle. Of course, we can still move it up and down. That still works. So how can we work with this better? Well, we can use the Snap Working Pivot Tools. So how this works is we have two main kind of tools right here, Place Working Pivot and Selection Pivot. So essentially, depending on how you want to work, you can click on Place Working Pivot. Now, as you can see, uh, these things appear around here. That may be the, um, the bounding box. So if you just click on that without the bounding box, what you can do right now, you can see how it kind of snaps different parts of your mesh. So the center of the face, the middle of the edges, and the vertices. Once you've left-clicked on that, you can then hold to align it to different edges, the center of edges, vertices, and so on and so forth. So for example, if we wanted to align our gizmo to this right here, click on Place Working Pivots, click right here, maybe snap right there, and there we go, guys. Now it switched, as you can see, automatically from wherever we were to working. And now we can very easily move according to this angle right here, and we can move the edges as well as well as the vertices. Now remember, 3ds Max remembers your last gizmo axis position. So you don't even have to, you know, left click on this and then the gizmo. All you have to do, guys, is simply left click on the edge or vertex and just move. So there you go. All right, so that is the first way. Place, working, pivot. Sometimes though, you just wanna have the pivot extracted from the selection. So for example, if I select this and let me just chamfer this, you can hold down Alt and then move your mouse right or left to change how many segments there are. All right. So now we have once again, this angle right here. Let's see and move it according to that angle. Well, I can select this for example, selection pivot. As you can see now it's right there. Now I can move it according to this right here. All right, next we have a line. That allows us to align the working pivot according to various snap points as well. If we get confused, we can simply click on reset that. All right, guys, next we have the align pivot to working pivot. This simply moves the object's pivot to the working pivot. We also have place pivot bounding box. So when we use the place working pivot tool, if we activate the bounding box, you notice how we get this, which essentially creates a box around our object so we can set it to these corners, for example. So we can have our pivot be like this. I'll switch this also to working and there we go. All right, we can create a grid from the working pivot. So now we can create objects on that grid. So for example, let's say we wanna create four cylinders on this face right here. Well, I will go into the face level, pressing four, Click on this right here, selection pivot, create grid from working pivot, and now we have a grid aligned right here. Now I've got a hotkey set to cylinder, I've got that set to shift five. So I can now create cylinders on this grid.
We can also create a point from the working pivot. As you notice, there's now a new point helper. Now you can use this for rigging and animation and those kinds of purposes. Because a lot of times when people create rigs, they don't rig the object itself. They will use a helper object. So that's very useful for that as well. So notice that when you create a grid right here, it kind of overrides the default grid. Notice how this grid isn't really working anymore. If I try and create a box on there, it's not really working anymore. But you can either select this and delete it, or you can select it, right click and activate the home grid. So now the home grid is active. We can now create things on that. But this grid is still here. If we need it for future purposes, we can just right click and activate that. And now this will be used and not the home grid. All right, guys, so for this video, I wanna show you how you can use this dialog box, but in the future videos, this will just be off and I'll be using the hotkeys, place working pivot and selection pivot. Mostly I'll be using selection pivot because I find that's just very quick. I can select an edge, activate the hotkey and bam, there we go. So now we have those tools. Let me show you how we can use them in this example. So in this situation, guys, I can of course model things like this and I probably should, but I also wanna show you how I can model at strange angles because I'm sure gonna run into playing those situations as well. So keep in mind that the block help may not be entirely finished here. I may off camera go in here and fix up some small things here, but essentially what I can do is have some sort of machinery go around this cylinder. So what I can do, for example, is I can select this, right? I'm gonna go ahead and select this face and selection pivot, there we go. I wanna go ahead and control shift to make a copy here. I'm gonna clone that to an object. So that is now a new object. All right. I am now going to just uh, move this like so. And what I'm essentially going to do is to use the cut tool to kind of cut around like so. I'm gonna delete this vertex and that's left with this right here. All right, guys, now I'm simply going to move this, let's say like so. I am now going to shell this. That's too much, let's decrease that. All right, after applying shell, I'm going to apply just at a poly and then symmetry, and there we go, guys. We now have this going around here. So one great thing about 3ds Max, guys, is that all the tools work together very nicely. So right now, for example, we've got this very messy mesh right here. How can we fix this? Well, it's simple, guys. We just use retopology. Retopology, let me do like a 25. There we go. And so now, we can just symmetry that. And there we go, guys. We now have this nice thing uh, going around here. So guys, all these tools work together very nicely to just give 3ds Max a very powerful modeling workflow, I have to say. All right, so last time I got a very rough kind of uh, uh, awkward looking leg right here. Let's do a little bit more work on this. I think I wanna have some sort of central piece right here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is Go ahead and select this. I'm gonna go ahead and link this to that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And so now what I'm going to do is select this and kind of rotate it around here. Actually, I'll select one of them and I'll, I'll unlink that. And I will unlink this as well. So now when I rotate this, only one of that those ones right here was being rotated like this. All right, next what I'm going to do for this is to apply a different symmetry modifier. And I'm essentially going to just work with this going into mirror. Make sure I'm using working pivot here. I'm simply going to rotate this until I get a slight different effect right here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the symmetry modifier. I'm gonna apply it a poly on top. I essentially wanna clean this up a little bit here, guys. How can we clean this up? We can select this edge, for example, double click to loop that, hold control and click on remove to get rid of that. All right, I've got this. I'm just going to go ahead and scale this. All right, guys, as you can see, we need to create a little bit of room for this. So what I'm going to do is to just insert a loop through here and let's say through here and let's say right there and let's say right there. 
I'm simply going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to go ahead, let me just isolate this so you can see it better. I'm going to go into border. I'm going to Alt P to cap that. And I'm going to just connect these vertices real quick. Afterwards, guys, we can simply apply retopology if we want clean topology. As you can see, now things start nicely fitting together. And now I'm going to modify this as well. Let me go ahead and hold shift to copy this over here. And I'm going to move this as well. So as you can see, guys, we're just gradually building up our complex part right here. I'm going to apply edit spline and I'm going to do changes here as well. The working period, guys, as you can see, works even on splines. So if I click on place working pivot, you can see I can even do it on these lines as well. All right, I'm going to refine. All right, I'm going to modify this as well. Place working pivot, let's put it right over here. And let's modify this a little bit as well. I'm going to connect this right here and then I'm going to extrude that and symmetry. I'll just delete this symmetry modifier and apply a new one. There we go. I'm going to apply smooth as well. All right, guys, now you have a good instruction how to use working pivot and we made a little bit more progress here. Thank you for watching and take care.